ultimate Mako total knee replacement guide. All right, for beginners, for people who are more experienced in surgical technology, who want to learn how to scrub orthopedics, this is where the future is headed. Mako robot total knees. So this is a guide that has been requested and that I wanted to put together so that you'll be able to watch it from the beginning and to the end and you'll understand how to scrub total knees and you'll be able to confidently walk into the room and help your doctors or your surgeons do total knee procedures that are assisted by the Mako robot. So here at the facility that I'm at right now, we literally only use three Mako trays, which is amazing. Wow. We don't have to open up so many trays and go through a bunch of uh, pans just to take out a few things that we're gonna need for the case. We only use the Mako TK1 tray, the Mako TK2 tray, and the Mako TK3 tray, along with a Duracon patella cutting guide, and then if we decide to not go cemented and we do press fit, we use this press fit instrument tray. So of course, depending on the doctor that you're working with, uh, the surgeon's preferences and how they do the case, everybody does things a little bit differently, but I'm gonna go through these trays, open them up, and I'm gonna explain to you how the surgeon that I work with, um, how he does things and just break down the steps and. I'm hoping that will be a good uh, outline or guideline that can help anybody that's trying to learn how to do Mako Total Knees and um, assist them in being able to scrub them in the future. So we got Mako TK1 tray. One table, here's the Mako TK2 tray. We have Mako TK3 tray. The patella cutting guide. And then also the press fit instrument tray. I'm gonna keep this very straight for you guys. I'm not gonna try to pretend like I know anything that I don't know. Um, and I'm not gonna try to overly complicate it. I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible with that, so that you understand the instrumentation, which is what I'm gonna go through first. The things that we take out of each tray, what we use, why it's used. And then after I show you the instrumentation, I zoom in a little bit so you can see it up and close. Then I'm gonna go through the steps of the procedure. That way you know what comes first, what comes second, what comes third, and why everything is used. Our pelvic array. Our base array. Our blunt probe. Our sharp probe. The handle the Mako screwdriver, this metal, I don't know exactly what it's called, but you pull this out, this piece. The end effector array, this piece. All right. You take out these pin holders. There's two pin holders here that are 4.0. We call the shorter one shorts and we call the longer ones pants. Um, we don't use the 4.0 ones. There's 4.0 uh, shorts and pants available, but we use the 3.2 shorts and pants. And like I said, I'll zoom in on everything that way you can see it a lot better. We use this screw that goes with the end effector array. And then also these pieces that go with the pelvic array and then also the femoral array. So you'll see it when I zoom in. So sometimes when they need to create a little bit more space in the knee when it's a little bit too tight, um, they put these spoons in. Depending on how much space they need to create, they'll tell you the size spoon that they need. So you have five, six, four, three, and then two one spoons. And you have two of each. So these, what I usually do is I leave them in my tray and I line them up based on the size 
That way it's easy to get to. And if he asks me for one, then I know which size he'll need, and that'll be the one that I use. Or the one that I grab, excuse me. And on the bottom of this tray is the Mako handpiece. And then also, this is the piece that the blade goes into. This piece, and then this piece, and then the wrench. So that's everything that I pull out. Now we'll zoom in. All right. So when you're setting up for the Mako Total Knee, you're gonna open up this pack that has discs in them, these black discs, and the black discs are gonna go on the end of most of these things that you're gonna use here to register the Mako instruments with the robot. So normally what I do, like with the Sharp Probe and Blunt Probe, uh, the pack will kinda come, comes in this white container, and I stick these like, onto where the uh, the disc are and I usually press down sometimes I even like hit the table that way I can make sure it really gets on there because if there's any space in between the disc and the um, the probes or the instruments then sometimes it won't register correctly and it might mess you up during the case so you really want to make sure that they're pressed down as much as possible and that there's no space showing um, these probes you're going to use during the case to help register so you got the blunt probe and you got the sharp probe. All right, so this screwdriver is used when you're putting the Mako handpiece onto the actual Mako robot. So when you pull this out of the tray um, and you're taking it over to the robot, you got all this extra cord here. What I like to do when I first pull it out is grab the cord and actually like, you know, what I'll do is I'll take this cord and I'll start wrapping it up like this. All right, not to, so that there's not so much loose cord. I'll wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. Then I'll put it on my arm like that, you know, sterilely of course. And then you don't want this handpiece to be swinging around. So the way that you lock it into place is you click that and then that'll, that'll lock it. So wherever it is, pushing it down to unlock it if it's over there and you lock it, it'll get locked like that. You know, he uses that uh, during the cutting process to help him with his angles. But when you're loading it onto the actual robot, we usually have it straight up and down like that. So I lock it, then lock it into place like that. Now, the screwdriver handle will help twist this in. So you'll basically, you know, you'll walk this over to the robot, you put it onto the robot, and then normally I put, I keep one hand kind of here, then I put that onto these, and I'll screw, I'll kind of put in a, another finger there, that way I can, you can screw it quickly, and then you do the other side. Same thing. All right. And then you usually uh, take the end of this, give it to your rep, and then strap the, the handpiece onto the robot. All right. Then at the end of the case, always have this ready for your rep. Your rep will love you if you have it ready for them to give it to them. That way they can take this off of the robot for you and put it into your case card. All right. Now, when registering the robot, you're gonna need this end effector array. The same way you put the disc onto the blunt probe and the sharp probe is the same thing with this. You'll have the white container that has the disc in it. You push this in there and you basically push it down. All right. Um, to completely assemble this, you put this piece in here, in that hole, and then you take this screw and screw it in. And this is gonna be the piece that you put onto the hand piece like that. When it has red showing, it means it's unlocked, and you push it clockwise. It looks like clockwise to lock it, and that'll lock it in place. So that'll be facing the, uh, the camera. And then the same thing with this base array. You put the disc on, and you take it over to the robot, you put it in the robot, and your rep will help you with all this. 
but these two pieces, the end effector array and the base array, are what face the camera when you're doing your registering for the robot prior to the case. So that's what these two are used for. You got that and then that. All right, so during the case, you'll be using the femoral array and then also the pelvic array. So just like the end effector array, just like the base array, just like the sharp probe and the blunt probe, you're gonna put the disc onto these and then you also put these pieces on there. The way that these basically sit on the patient uh, during the case to register the patient's knee and have, have it be basically uh, aligned with the robot is it stays on through pins. So we use the, our pin driver or our drill with the pin driver attachment. We put uh, two pins into the femur and then two pins into the tibia, all right? So the two pins go through these sleeves that I was talking about earlier. You got the shorts and you got the pants, all right? So this will be sitting like at the femur and then this will be sitting at the tibia. And then the Mako will basically, these uh, arrays will basically slide through the pins and sit on it with these. And then they'll tighten it up with the handle. You give the doctor the handle, they'll tighten it up. And that's what'll keep these arrays in place. So this connects to this array like this. And you give the doctor the handle and they basically tighten it onto the pins. That way it won't come off. And now you can't, you know, can't get it off. And yeah. Now, uh, we started using the pelvic array for the tibia. Um, we used to use, when I first started doing uh, Mako Total News, we used to use the tibial array. But we've gotten away from using the tibial array and it seems like people primarily like to use this pelvic array. I think there's more space with the pelvic array. You put that down, this will face the camera. This one's pretty easy to assemble. But the femoral array, you put Mako to Mako. Tighten that onto it. Now, depending on what knee you're doing determines what side to put this on, right? Now, if you're doing a left knee, this will be facing the camera like that, all right? Or it'll be facing the other way if you're doing a right knee. And then the way that I remember is you always match it with this one. So if the camera is in front of you that way and you want this to be facing that way, now you don't want this array or this uh, attachment piece to the array to be in the field. You want it to be out of the field. Hey. <laughs> I'm doing a video. <laughs> so you would want it to be like that. And I'm like, well, I have a chance in between that case. I'm like, I might as well do this video real quick. So during our total knee procedure, we use two saw blades, right? We open up two saw blades. We open up a saw blade for our uh, regular um, drill that comes with a, a saw in it. And it comes with a saw drill, and then you open up the saw to go on the drill. And then we also open up a Mako saw blade. So to put the Mako saw blade in, you Basically, so counterclockwise locks it and clockwise opens it up, right? So you open it up clockwise, you put the saw blade in, and then normally I hold the top like that and then turn it counterclockwise and that'll lock the saw blade in. Um, after we make the cuts for the total knee or the first cuts, they'll give you back this uh, attachment and then you unlock it Sometimes it's too tight. Sometimes you can, you can turn it clockwise and that'll unlock it. But then other times it's too tight and you'll need to use this wrench. So you put the wrench in, you push it clockwise, and then that'll unlock it. Take the saw blade out, 
and then you put it into this attachment to make the rest of the cuts. So both of these will be used to make the cuts. Um, normally, when you're about to make the cuts, you'll have your saw blade in this attachment, then you'll hand it to the doctor when you're about to make the cuts. They'll put it into the Mako handpiece. Uh, I worked with a guy that used to say nut up, so you remember how it went in. It doesn't go like regular how you would think with a saw like that. It goes like that and he would say nut up and then you lock it, right? Um, a way that you could be ahead for the doctor that would help is you can already have the saw blade in there. After you do your uh, registering with the end effector array, before I put my drape on the robot to keep it sterile for when they bring the uh, patient in, you take off this end effector array with the saw blade already on this piece, you put it in, you lock it, and then you know you leave it like that before you put the drape on. That way, the it's already ready. You know what I mean? You're one step ahead. Anything that you can do to get a couple steps ahead and to cut down the amount of time where your patient is going to be under anesthesia is a beautiful thing to do. So that's one uh, tidbit or one tip. And then also, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this tray, for the TK1 tray. So just to show you a few more things here in the tray, um, like I was saying earlier, these are the spoons that we use to create a little bit more space in the knee if we need it. These, this attachment here we use for um, partial knees, knee replacements, um, the unis. You know, this is what the reamer goes into if you ever need to use that. Um, if you're cementing, people use this to remove the cement. Um, we also use a debakey is what our doctor uses and then our other doctor likes to use a freer elevator. So, you know, everybody likes to do things differently. This is also an attachment uh, or a impactor that we use for the uni knees. This goes into the small uni femur. And yeah, these are the 4.0 shorts and pants that slide over the pins. These uh, slide over bigger pins, whereas the 3.2 ones slide over smaller pins. They try to use smaller pins. You don't wanna be drilling big pins into people. Um, what else is in this tray? This is the tibial array, which we don't use. We use a pelvic array for the tib tibia. And then this is a drill attachment that we use. We actually use bigger pins in our, um, in our hip cases. So then we'll use this attachment to help us with the, uh, you put the bigger pins in it and it helps drill. It has an attachment that it goes into or you could chuck it up on your drill too. So, yeah. there it is, the first tray. Now I'll pull out everything that we use in the Mako TK2 tray and then I'll zoom in and kind of show you a better view of everything. So, uh, in our TK2 tray we have our handles, our green handles here, they're the impactor handles. We have this pin driver that we use for the tibial base plate. We have this femoral impactor and extractor. It takes the uh, femoral trials out. All right. We have these patella drill guides. So these are all different sizes. You have 27 through 40. All right. So you have 27, 29. 32, 35, 38, and 40. Um, and then that goes with these patella trials, these different sizes of patella trials. And you also have these, uh, this spike piece that goes with the patella clamp. Uh, this is what you use to drill the patella. And then also this is the patella um, impactor, basically. Alright, you have this little caddy that we have that has all of these drills in it. So you got the ball streamer that goes with the tibia. You have this, basically this attachment um, adapter. Um, we have this osteotome from the set that our doctors like to use that goes onto this handle. So they use this a lot of times to 
create a release in the knee. These are the pins that go along with the tibial pin inserter. You got two pins. And then this is the femoral drill. This is the patella drill. You got three drills in there and they attach to this. You pull this collar back on the adapter. The adapter goes on the chuck uh, or on uh, like, forget what it's called, but it's an attachment that comes in the drill. This will go on to there and you pull this collar back to put the drills on there. You have this patella um, sizer. You have these two plates for the patella, a small one and a large one. And then you also have all your impactors in this track. All right. This is the femoral impactor. This is the secondary femoral impactor. This is the tibial impactor. This is the secondary tibial impactor. And then this is the poly impact. And in one of our other trees, we have this uh, anterior femoral retractor. We call it Mr. Wiggles, <laughs> but he, there's one that comes in this tray too. So yeah, that's everything in that tray that we need. Cool. All right, so that's everything that we're gonna use in the TK2 tray. Now let me pull this out again. And now I'm going to pull out everything that we're going to use in the TK1 tray and then basically, you know, just break the case down from top to bottom. That way y'all understand why you use everything and how it's used. So this is the handle for the tibia. They call this the lollipop too. So depending on what size you're going to use for the tibia, what size you need for the patient, there's twos here. And these are all the polys that go with it. Threes here, the polys that go with it, and so forth. Four, five, six, seven. So let's say that our patient is a three tibia, right? And you'll take this, you take the handle. See, there's a little, there's a little hole right here at the top of the tibial base plate. And that's what this goes into. So the way that you put it on, you press that first. You put that in and that'll like activate the spring there and you go in. Now, once that thing is over there, then you let go and that's how it'll, it'll lock in. And same way you take it off. You press that first, push in, and then take it off. So push, boom, 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 boom. You just practice. It's a little weird at first, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So boom, that's how you set up. One of our doctors calls it the lollipop. So you're like, all right, we're gonna use a three. So that's what we're gonna use. And for the femur, let's say it's a four and it's a four right. You gotta know what side you're gonna do. If it's a left, then it'll be F four L or four R. R for right, L for left. So it all depends on what size you are and then you also figure out what, uh, what side as well. So let's say it's a four right. So we're gonna use a four right over a three tibia and then they want a, a 10 poly. So then you pull out the 10 poly. It tells you the sizes here, um, depending on how much <clears throat> how much they, uh, I don't even know the right word to use. Sometimes they just, there's more space in between the tibia and femur, so you'll need a 10. If there's less space, then you'll need a nine. Uh, whatever is gonna make the alignment be as best as it can. So this goes into here with the top going in first, and then the bottom will kind of just sit down. So there's that, and then also, we have these towers. So they're gonna drill into the tibia uh, right before we put the final implants in. So when you're sizing, they'll put this in, they'll see how it feels, they'll be like, all right, I like it, I like it, it's cool. And then same thing with this, they'll put this in, they'll see if it, if it fits right on the tibia. And if it does, then you'll take this tower. So since we have a size three, you're gonna use a one to three tower. Let's say we had a size four or five or six tibia, then you would use the four through eight tower. So it's one of these. So we're gonna use the one through three. And then there's these punches. So there's three different punches. There's the one through three punch. You can see the sizes right here. 
There's the four through six punch. And then there's also the seven and eight punch. So same thing with that. Let's say we had a, like we have a size three tibia, so we're gonna use obviously the one through three punch. And that'll fit right through here like that. They'll take this, they'll have this on the tibia, right? And they'll take this, lock it in, take this off while they're doing it, lock this in, all right? And then they'll take the punch and that'll go right through the tibia. And that'll create that space for the implant. But let's say you had a size four tibia. So if we had a size four tibia, like let's say you're trialing and you have this on and they're like, actually, you know what? I think I want a four. And you're gonna grab this and you're gonna switch this out for this one because you know you need the four through eight tower. That's the one that's gonna fit on here. And then you're not gonna use this one through three punch anymore. Now you know you need the four through six punch. But our doctor, he actually likes to use both. So if you go up, he'll, he'll do the smaller punch, this one, the one through three, and then he'll also use the four through six. So, and then it, we also use this drill too. So they'll drill, they'll drill first, and then they'll put the punch through. All right. So, yeah, I mean, like, basically, that's it, you know, the case, the way that the case flows for us, I like to break down total knees into three separate parts. I feel like you got patella, then you have the knee, and you have the tibia, and those are the three things you gotta fix. And it's whatever order that the doctor wants to do it in, everybody does it a little bit differently. So for us, we do the patella first. The first thing we do is we use this, this clamp, you put it on the patella, all right, and then you saw, the saw goes through here, so he cuts the patella, which makes it flush. And after he cuts the patella, then he uses the sizer here to make sure that the cut is right. Sometimes they'll go back and cut it again. But after he likes the cut with the saw, then he'll take this cutting, this uh, drill guide, and put this connector with the spikes on one end. And then they'll tell you, oh, that looks like a 29. So then you grab the patella guide that, that's there. And then they're gonna drill the patella with this patella drill. And that'll make the space for the, uh, the patella actual like implant. So there's that. I usually line up my sizes just so I can see the numbers and as soon as they call it out, I can just grab it. So that's patella. For the femur, to get that ready, like I said earlier, you use the, for the Mako, we use this and the other one that's here somewhere. Over here. What do I do with that? Oh, it's on here. Yeah, basically these are the two things you use. You put the saw on these two attachments. It puts, it does the cuts on the femur and then the femur is ready for the trial. And then you make sure you like it with the trial. Then you drill it with the, the femoral drill through these holes. And that's basically it. Then your femur is ready for, for the implant. And then the last thing is the tibia. So you'll make uh, the cuts with the Mako on the tibia. And then after that, they'll trial the tibia, make sure they actually like it. And then when, when you trial it, you, uh, you put the pins in, the two pins with this pin driver. Put that in there, you give it to them like that. They'll put the two pins in the tibia so that it stays in the tibia. And then, you know, you use the tower or use the, uh, the tibia drill first and then the tower for whatever size that it corresponds and then the punch and then your tibia is ready. That's it. So once everything is ready, then you're ready to put in your implants. Your nurse will open up your implants for you. Um, and then you're gonna use your handles and your impactors. That's these right here. So this is the, the femoral impactor. So this is a trial, but just pretend like it's the final implant. You put these spikes in the side of femur here. All right, and then push this button to put it in the handle. You turn it right to tighten it to make sure that it's all the way on. 
so that it's not gonna fall off when you hand them the, the trial or the uh, implant, excuse me. You hand it off like that, you give it to them with a mallet, boom. They put the femur in, they take off that, the primary impactor. <laughs> and then they take the secondary impactor. Boom. Then for the tibia, one of our doctors actually doesn't even use this. He just goes straight to the secondary. But this is the primary tibial impactor. They put the tibia on that, lock it in, and then uh, yeah, they knock it down with a mallet. Take the secondary impactor, knock it down with a mallet, and then your tibia is done. And then the last thing, or the two last things, is the patella clamp. So this is the impactor for the patella clamp. And then this also goes on the other side of the spikes. And then they basically close that down on the patella to get the, uh, the implant in and that's it. Then this poly goes in here for, or excuse me, this impactor goes in here for the poly. And yeah, that's basically it. I mean, there's some differences depending on the doctor. Um, there's gonna be a few differences depending on if you cement or if it's, uh, it's the opposite of cement. Press fit. Press fit. Thank you, bro. <laughs> and, you know, there's a few things that we use here in the press fit tray. Like, we do some drilling, some extra drilling in the tibia. Like, this will correspond with, these sizes will correspond with the tibia that you're using. They'll put this through that hole that we created with the punch and then drill through it. Why is it that we do this drill? Drilling for a uh, press fit just to help uh, pre prep the bones, you know, any fractures. Okay, fractures, yeah. okay, so there you go. That's why we do the extra drilling if you do press fit. Um, some uh, patients are a better candidate for cement, I guess, if their bone is a little bit weaker, it's not as strong as older patients, and then the press fit is usually better for patients that are that have like stronger bones that are younger, you know, a little bit more durable. And then we also use this different impactor for the patella on press fit. And this corresponds with the patella. There's 40 through, or 29 through 40. And then there's also another patella drill that we use for press fit. And lastly, I feel like I said that 20 times. There's the tibial punches that we use and you know the difference because these say cementless so you just got to be careful if you're doing cement there's you know the punches that you use for cement but if not then you have to use these punches so you just want to make sure you're using the right stuff and double checking with the doctor a lot of times like i'll grab the wrong one by an accident and the doctor will be like oh yo we need the the other ones and i'll be like oh my bad you know so everybody is uh there to help you get through it as long as you're trying your best. So there you go. The ultimate guide, Mako, total knee replacement. It's your boy, surgical guru.